Good morning. Let me see if I can put that over there while I get my stuff up and running. <laughs> and fix my hair at the same time, right? All righty. I know I may not have many fans on this early Saturday morning. I would probably be still in the bed too if I didn't have a session. But I want to come on and um I wanted to go ahead and come on because I want to do a introduction of our Bible study that we're going to be doing for the next couple of weeks. Uh, Abby way down here. And so today won't be long. It is more of... A introduction of what we're going to be um, speaking about. I wanted to show you the book that we're referencing from. If you wanted to order this book, um, I got it off of Amazon. I'm going to let you guys see that. So, along of course with the Bible, we'll be referencing, referencing from this book. If you wanted to um, purchase that over the next six weeks, you can do so. So I feel like I need to pray over these sessions just because I want to make sure that the Lord is with us and covering us. Not saying I don't want him to be with us on the other ones, but um, I just feel like something is going to happen and shift during this time. And so I just want to make sure that. Um, we get all of God's anointing, all of his power. We get everything that we need during this hour. So, Father God, we bless you this morning. We love you. We thank you for your amazing grace. Thank you, Father God, for another opportunity, for another opportunity to praise you. I just pray now, God, and lift up your wives who will come in contact with this video, with this message, and pray that they will be blessed, God. I pray, Lord, that you will speak through me to your daughters, God, in this hour, in this season, and help them, Father God, as they transform and be what it is that you will have them to be going forward. Lord, we bless you. We love you, God. We pray over this message, no backlash. We cancel the plans of the evil one, his tactics, his schemes, God, and we pray for your holy angels to surround us and keep us during this time. I pray and ask these things in your son Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. All right. So, if you're not with me on the live, that is fine. Um, you can always catch the replay. You can always catch the replay. But I wanted to go over some of the, the background information because I'm also sharing this on my YouTube page. And so, some of the, the information that I put on um, my Instagram, the YouTubers don't necessarily have that. So, I want to make sure that I go over some of the background information we're not going to actually do any studying of of it more than me highlighting some parts of what we will be discussing over the next six weeks all right so what is the purpose of this bible study what is the purpose of this bible study so i know i had told instagram i think back in january <laughs> i think it was january the 18th that i was going to do a bible study on abigail 
right? And it never happened. It never happened. And so one of the first reasons I want to do this Bible study this year is because I have never taken into consideration the Lent season. I've heard about it. I spoke about it. Um, I've heard about it. I heard, I've heard others speak about it. I know it's more of a, a Jewish uh, tradition. Um, but after listening to my mentor, Pastor Darius Daniels, um, and he had been speaking about it, um, I was more in tune with it, especially <laughs> with um, me transitioning um, through some things. And so um, I wanted to do this Bible study for that specific reason, just to kind of give um, my wife some type of devotion to go to uh, some, some something to kind of like um, lean on. So, um, this is what I want to use this teaching for. The second reason, the second reason, like I said, I'm going through transitioning. <laughs> Coach T will be turning the big four zero this year. And so one of the things that stood out to me, um, is 40 is the new season. 40 is like, uh, uh when you're going into your new season. And so even as I prep wise for their new and next season, I want to also be prepared myself and see what it is that God will have me to do going forward. All right. So one of the things that my um, mentor, Darius Daniels, said was this is a season of focus, fasting and feeding. This is a season of focus, fasting and feeding. Um, so I want to, one, focus on my clients, focus on my 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 wives, focus on my um my couples, I am extremely focused on my um, couples in this season, the ones that who are preparing for marriage or um, getting ready to go into marriage. I, I know on this page is just about my wives, but I do have another page that I speak on um, from a marriage um, from a marriage life coach point of view. And so I want to focus on my clients in this season. That's one. I have made some decision based on what the Holy Spirit has led me to do. Um, which I really didn't understand because I don't eat a whole lot of fried food, but that was something that the Lord spoke to me and um, said that he wanted me to give up fried food. So I want to fast from fried, fried food. That is the thing I'm I'm giving up during this Lent, Lent season. And I'm saying it out loud so everybody hear me. So now I got to be held accountable. So if y'all see me with um, an egg roll, y'all can call me out. Because <laughs> that's my favorite. Egg rolls and little fried rice. Okay. Whatever. So I have made a decision to fast from from that. And then third, third feed, I want to feed God's people in this hour. I want to feed God's people. So even though this is a page for my wives, I know I have a lot of encounters from all types of people. And then also, like I said, I will be also sharing this on YouTube. So I want to feed God's people. Abigail is a story um, that I'm, I'm referring to to my wife, but she also can be used for anyone, anyone. All right. And so um, that's what I want to do for those three. So the Lent Bible verse comes from the book of Matthew chapter four, verses one to four. I'm not going to read it. Um, it's the story of Jesus in the wilderness for 40 days and 40 nights. And so if you go back and read through that, that will be a blessing to you. I want to just also pause and say you might want to get um, something to write down notes. Um, I'm more of a teacher, more than a preacher or a co you know or, or a person. I'm more I'm, I'm more of a, a teacher coach versus just somebody who just you know um, just throws stuff out there. So um, I always advise my listeners to take notes. Take notes. All right. All right, so why the study of Abigail, right? Why the study of Ab Ab Abigail? And for me, it's Abby for me, all right? Abby has always been one of my favorite, favorite, favorite Bible wise, all right? Um, she wins the wife award for me, hands down. Abby wins the wife award for me, hands down. Any woman who can deal with a crazy, unsubmitted, foolish husband, and still be a boss, she won, all right? She won. And so I want Abby's formula, um, Abby's formula um, has blessed me in many ways. Um, with her formula, she takes care of her business concerning her household. She takes care of her business concerning her household, and I applaud her for that, all right? She is one of my favorite Bible characters. Her um, story is in First Samuel 
chapter 25. And we're going to kind of get into that in a little bit. Because Abigail's story shares so many attributes of Jesus. This is why I say it's not just for wise, but I am doing a study for the wise. But anybody, excuse me, can take hold of this of this teaching. Um, she has so many attributes that um, shows Jesus. And so this is one of the reasons why I chose her for this Bible study during this Lent season. All right. Since Lent season walks us towards resurrection, walks us towards the Easter season, it's a perfect study to prepare to either examine our hearts for to examine our hearts for the cross that we are carrying, we have carried, or we will be carrying. All right. So it walks us into the red. This is the third reason. It walks us into the resurrection season of Easter to help us examine our hearts for the cross we are carrying, we will be carrying, or we have carried. Listen, everybody carries a cross. Everybody carries a cross. That is part of your assignment here on earth. Whether you're carrying that mother cross, whether you're carrying that wife cross, whether you're carrying that job cross, everybody carries a cross. And if you're not carrying a cross, I can guarantee you're probably not doing some of the things that God will have you to do, all right, for your life. So the Bible story of Abigail's story comes from 1 Samuel 25, verses 1 through 42. Like I said, we're not going to get into everything today. I just want to kind of like highlight a few things so you can prepare for going forward next week. After reading and studying the book of Abigail, I pray that my wife or any of my listeners, followers, viewers, um, will become familiar and strengthened in their faith as they continue on their healthy journey in the marriage. Now, I know I didn't introduce myself because most of you know me, but I'm going to take this time to introduce myself. My name is Coach T. On this page, I am his wife coach, all right? I coach wives um, who are in unhealthy marital covenants or who are married to a um, unhealthy spouse, um, I help them to prioritize self-care, nurture their soul, and basically live a healthy life for themselves while in an unhealthy marital covenant. And so I hope after this Bible study, wives will get to a place where their faith is strengthened as they continue on their marital journey. All right. So I asked this question, think about that one person, lady, male, whoever it could be, um, that you look to as an example and subscribe to be like, how has the example shaped or formed you as a wife or as an individual? So that would be something that you would want to, you know, kind of sit down and ask yourself. Um, that would be something that you would want to, um, you know, kind of like reflect on who was that person who you ascribe to be like, or who's that person who has been like, um, superior in your life? Who's that person? I have a few, um, um, my father, my father was, uh, I used to call him, he's my, he was my coach. All right. My father passed away. It's been, hmm, my son be 13, my son's 13, 14. So it's probably been about 14 years ago. Um, my father passed away, um, 14 years ago. And I would say he was my life coach. He was my go-to. He was my, let me call my daddy and see what to do. He was, he was that person for me. All right. And, um, of course I have many people here now pray for, thank God. Um, but my daddy was my, was my go-to person. And I see even without trying to be like him <laughs> or my mama, <laughs> I see a lot of what um, he installed in me. I follow some of those same, you know, attributes. And so you think about that person, you think about that person and write that down and kind of reflect on that. All right. One of the biggest lessons I've learned from Abigail, one of the biggest lessons I learned from Abigail, I learned about Abigail back in the day, honey. I, um, I was going to Berean Christian Church and Pastor Lee, the overseer, the founder, um, Pastor Lee, he he would always ask this question. He would he would be like, "Have you ever came in contact with a fool?" <laughs> I just love hearing him teach about the story of Abigail. Have you ever came in contact with a fool? All right. And so I learned about the Abigail story when I you know back in the day in my early twenties. Um, I've been following Abigail story for a long time. So 
one of the things that Abigail, her, she has a spirit of humility. She has a spirit of humility. And so Abby taught me how to have that humble approach and to choose wisdom instead. Okay. She taught me how to have that humble approach and to use humility instead. Humility is a character that we as wives, and I want to say we as wives, sometimes struggle with because a lot of times we feel entitled. Man, you have no idea how many wives I come in contact with who feel they are entitled to a thing, who feel like their husband are supposed to be a certain way, who feel like life is supposed to go this way for them. So many we women, uh, wives, I come in contact, feel entitled. But Abigail teaches us the importance of having a humble spirit, of having a humble spirit. Now, on here, it's not my goal to, um, you know, try to force anybody or make anybody change their mind about anything. But I do pray and hope that through this setting, you will begin to renew your mind and begin to have a different perspective on rather your 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 relationship with your spouse, um, you know, maybe at work, maybe with other people. Um, humility is just something that we, and, I, and, and maybe it's just us here in America, I don't know, um, that we just don't do well in. <laughs> we just don't do well. And so I hope through this study, we will be able to get you to think a little bit different when it comes down to that because you can win over you can win a person over so much better with walking in humility the bible even tells us that the lord um um uh, oppresses the, the the proud that he, he he doesn't he doesn't but he comes to the rescue of the humble one he comes to the rescue of the humble one and that's me kind of like paraphrasing it it's not exactly those words but it's something like that. God don't like proud folks, okay? Let's say it like that, all right? So some skills to take into consideration. One of the needs of every wife or woman that I know, that I've ever come in contact with, is she needs to feel secure. She needs to feel secure. Every wife woman, every wife or woman needs that. That is one of her number one needs. She needs to feel secure, and so one of the skills that every wife needs is she ought to develop the skill of hospitality. Hospitality. This is one of the skills that Abigail had. All right. Every wife needs to pray about being strong and courageous. Now, a lot of times people think that the word strong and courageous are only um, reserved for the for the male. It's only reserved for the male. And that is absolutely false. That is absolutely false. God has called even you, wife, to walk in the strength of courageous, to walk in the strength of courageous, all right? These are two um, skills that a wife must learn to walk in on her journey. Wait a minute, because they, they doing this fool to me with this llama. They starting already, Jesus. I hate that. Okay. Hopefully y'all can't hit a lawnmower that loud, but it's Saturday morning. They got a little sun out, so they wanna they wanna start this, okay? So um there are two yes, yeah, yeah, so strong and courageous. Women wives need to learn how to be courageous as well. All right. And I wanted to show you this book. I think I had came over here, came on. A couple of days ago and told you about oh this llama for to make my nerves <laughs> i came on a couple of days and told you like who my go-to um mentors are who my go-to um followers are as far as my spiritual guide you know spiritual guidance well, of course my my church that you know i attend but it's just certain people that i follow on youtube that i go to and i use a lot of their um you know, a lot of their resources. And so Joyce Myers, baby, listen, if you are a wife, if you are planning to be a wife, as you can tell, I like books. I like books. All right. And so this is the habits of a godly wife, a godly woman, a godly woman. And it's written by Joyce Myers. And this is such a good book to have. It's like one of those books you just want to kind of like tuck away, kind of like read on, a, you know, read in, in some of your downtime. Um, but this is a good book to have. All right. Habits of a Godly Wife. So many ladies. 
And I can say this as a marriage and wife coach <laughs> because so many ladies that I come in contact who are either wives are well ready or, you know, planning to be a wife are unwilling to learn the skills to be a godly wife. Because I think a lot of times people think being a godly wife sits you down from other things. I think they think being a godly wife is not cool. You know, being a godly wife is not down to earth. Listen, you can be cool, down to earth, twerk, have fun. You can still do all those things and still be a godly wife. What makes you different, wife, as a godly wife, you know the um the skill, you know that you you have the mindset, you know how to go to war concerning your marital covenant. You know how to put that on 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 hold. You know a time it's a time and place for everything. You know when to okay, I'm I gotta set this up aside because I gotta go into warfare for you know for my for my spouse. You know you have to be on guard uh, a lot of times about certain things concerning your household, concerning your husband, concerning your children. You know just concerning your household. You are a um um a guard for your for your home and so one of the places that the enemy try to attack a lot of times in the marriage yes he's going to come for your husband yes he's going to come for the head he's going to come for the leader but a lot of times the enemy's going for that wife he's going for that woman and if she is not in her rightful place and we're going to talk about some of her weaknesses in just a moment if she's not in her rightful place or if she's in a place of lack that whole house can fall down if you go back and read the book of proverbs it talks about uh, a, a wife who um takes care of her house and a wife who you know um who, who who guides her house and leads her house and a wife who um you know is 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 favorable in that area it talks about that and so a wife has to be on guard yeah you can be down to earth you can be cool you can twerk for your husband <laughs> <laughs> not in public all right you can do all those things you can do you can do things you can still be a, a fun loving you know carefree person to an extent to an extent because at all times wise i feel she'll be walking in wisdom and there's just certain things that girl little girls do versus what grown women slash wives do all right so that's the difference in that area so if you can let me see this book, Habits of a Godly Wife. Um, get this book. Get this book. This is a, a good, great book. And it would truly be a blessing for you. All right. Wives have to learn. They have to learn when the enemy comes for their household and their families. They have to learn how to defeat him in the spirit. Stand firm and fight for what's theirs. Fight for what's theirs. We have too many weak wives in the kingdom we have too many weak wives who will give up too quickly we have too many weak wives who are not in a place where um fighting is their portion it's like oh i want this oh i deserve to be happy you know listen i'm not gonna do that today but all that foolery there <laughs> I'm not saying that you don't deserve to be happy. I'm not saying that you don't deserve for somebody to love you and treat you well. But it's, it's levels to this thing. It's levels to this thing. I get so many wives I come in contact with that you knew what type of person this man was before you made a decision to marry him. You knew his background. You knew he didn't have a father figure in the home. You knew he grew up this way. You knew he was, you know, drinking. You knew he um, indulged in certain things. You knew these things, okay? You knew these things, and even maybe you participated in these things with him before you guys decided to get married. And now, all of a sudden, you get into this marriage and thinking everything's supposed to be lovey dovey, wonderful, cool, great, and wonderful. And it's not. And now you're like, question it. Oh, I got I got married to the wrong person. Oh, oh, I, I should have did this. Uh, oh, you know, I, I ain't going to be in this marriage and dealing with this kind of stuff. But you knew. <laughs> Women have to take, wives have to take, um, they have to take the consequences of the good and the bad, okay? It, it, it goes both ways. You don't take the vow for just the good. You take the vow for the good and the bad. So there's consequences, and there's a process to that happiness. You see, oh, it's so beautiful. They're walking down the street, and they're holding hands. They probably barely hold hands. They probably holding hands on, on, on a little bit of grace that God has given them in that hour, in that season, right? So... It's consequences to the choices that you make, whether you knew or you whether you, you knew it or you did not. Because the Bible talks about we are held accountable for the, the for the knowledge that we get or we do not get. And people are lacking, failing, um, going short because of their lack of knowledge. You think because you don't know a thing, it excuses it. No. It no. God holds you accountable to God holds you accountable to his word <laughs> it's like the book is there i send people your way 
I give people, I place people on 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 your um on your journey. I place people down your down your way for a specific reason. So you are held accountable for getting my word. Whatever you decide to do, um, concerning it, that's on you. If you don't read the word before you say I do, that's on you. If you didn't get premarital guidance before you say I do, that's on you. God's saying you can't hold me accountable for that because I give you my word. I give you my word. So just because you didn't know a certain thing and you went for it and did it, it does not excuse your behavior. It does not excuse you from what God word already said. So that's why I always emphasize and try to highlight for my couples, especially the ones that are young and they're so in love. I just want to get married. I want to just be happy. And that's great. That's fine. That's wonderful. But you got to do your work. You got to do your research. You got you to gotta, you gotta do your part. Because when consequences and things come, don't run from your consequences. You have to deal with what the choices that you made, good, bad, different, whatever. You have to deal with that part. So many wives struggle with these things, all right? They struggle with fear. They struggle with weaknesses, insecurities, and a perverted tongue. All of these things will take her out, especially in her marriage covenant, all right? Especially in her marriage covenant. And so as we get into the study of, you know, Abigail, I, I'm, I'm hoping and praying that um, wives will develop um, that, that faith and be strengthened in areas where they know how to go to the Word of God for everything, that they learn how to go to the Word of God for everything, all right? So let's talk about the background of Abigail. Abigail was very attractive and appealing. Um, she was she had a, a godly and gracious heart, like some or maybe most wives. Um, Abigail experienced uh, the adversity, the 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 adversity. I'm sorry, the adversity that comes from a childless marriage to a godless husband. All right, she experienced that. She navigated the challenges in her life by ambitiously seeking God and developing a passionate faith in him. Abigail made herself available to God, desiring his purpose to be fulfilled in her life. This humble attitude made her approachable. So when challenges arrived at her home, Abigail was ready for action. All right. Abigail was ready for action. And so to just, you know, kind of break that down a little bit and, you know, summarize that a little bit. So Abigail probably came, you know, and grew up in a background where, you know, she didn't have that godly example, that godly role model in her home. She didn't see that. And then um, she married a ungodly man. But during that time, somehow, somewhere on her journey, somewhere on her path, she ran into God. She ran into God. And through him, she was able to be um, a better, healthy, whole self for herself. And so when she was faced with different circumstances in her marriage and when she was faced with different things in her marriage she knew how to navigate through them and knew how to get through them because she had um, allowed God to perfect her and this is an area where wives have to come to this is an area where wives have to submit to a lot of times wives struggle with the word of I'm not submitting to my husband I'm not submitting to my husband okay submit to God <laughs> let's start let's Start there. Submit to God. Submit to God. Because if you submit to God, you're going to automatically su submit to your husband. And then I get the people who tell me, oh, well, I thought if my husband is not following the Lord, I don't have to submit to him. False, 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 and false. Now, I'm not saying that you're supposed to submit to his um, bad behavior. I'm not saying you're supposed to submit to his foolery. But uh, what I am saying is you're supposed to submit to God. You're supposed to submit to God and submit to his choice. If he decides, I'm not coming home tonight. What you going to sit there and argue with somebody who already telling you what they're not going to do? Is it going to hurt you? Absolutely. Is it going to make you upset? Absolutely. Are you going to want to go off? Absolutely. <laughs> You're going to do all those things, but you have to submit to their choice because what wives try to do, what I have, I, listen, Coach she here, I've, I've been guilty of this. You try to stand in the way of a person who has already told you what they're going to do. You're trying to stand in the way that you want to stop it. And that's called witchcraft. That's called control. You cannot stop a person from doing what they, what they have already set their mind out to do. This is why a lot of marriages go down because wives think they can come in between a man, an unsubmissive, foolish, crazy man. They think they can come in between that person and stop them from doing their foolery. And you cannot. The only way you can get in between that or come in between that is by praying for that spouse. 
that's it wives that's it so you have to do you do need to develop the spirit of submission start with submitting to god because the bible tells us we are to submit to one another under god we are to, we are supposed to submit to god first it'll be easier then for you to submit to your to your spouse even if he's not following god all right so some highlights from abigail's story she was attentive to her service and we're going to talk about her story we're going to begin her story on next week she was attentive to her servant all right now let me say hello to you guys let me say hello let me say hello <laughs> all right she assumed responsibility and leadership yes wives are leaders too so many people struggle with, oh, well, he the head. Oh, well, he the head. And he the head of the household. He's supposed to be doing this. If he the head of the household, he's supposed to be doing this. But what about your part? You're not, you're not the head of the household, but you are a leader in your household. Okay? You are a leader in your household. And so because you are a leader in your household, you have a responsibility too. So many times women, wives are um, pushing, pushing this, 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 this pressure on the man. Like, oh, you the head. You supposed to decide. Oh, you the head. You supposed to make this decision for us. No, you're a leader in the household too, wife. You're a leader in the household too, all right? Abigail did not wait for David to arrive. And again, we're going to talk about this story more into detail once we, you know, start reading it. Abigail did not wait for David to arrive. Instead, she appeared to him. In other words, and I love this part. I, this is like the favorite part of Abigail's story. In other words, at the notice of trouble... <laughs> At the notice of her servant coming to tell her, listen, girl, your husband, I got this man mad. He is coming for this house. Okay. He is coming for this house. As soon as Abigail got noticed that her house was in trouble, she took heed and made arrangements quickly. She didn't wait until it, you know, until it, it, it got worse. She took heed quickly. She took heed quickly. All right. And wives have to get to that point. We have to get to that place where we are initiating, where we are motivated, where we're not just kind of like dragging our feet on things. Don't wait and put all that responsibility on a man. Man, listen, do you know, <laughs> wife, how much pressure your husband is under daily from the moment he walked out of this house? He is under attack from the moment he gets in his car and goes, he is under attack. The enemy is trying to find a way to tear him down. It is so vital. It is so vital wise that you learn how to take some type of leadership role concerning your husband, concerning your household, take some kind of leadership role in, in, in serving your husband and affirming him and, and not send him out there, you know, all wacky and crazy or whatever. You have to understand this man is constantly under attack. All right. And so Abigail made arrangements at the notice of trouble. She, she, she moved quickly. She made amends with David, admitting her truth and accepting the responsibility of her home. As wives, we are called to cover our homes. We are called to cover our homes. And this is what Abigail did. All right. You are a cover. You are covered for your husband. You are covered for your home. You're covered for your children. Abigail apologized to David. She attacked his needs. What was his need? Okay. What was the need of David? He needed someone to understand his part and what he was going, what he was saying, and based off of what he had did for his family. It'll make sense when we read it. All right. But David needed somebody to understand, like, I know doggone well, I've been doing this, this, and this, and y'all going to come for me? Like, really? No. David needed somebody to understand. He needed someone to understand his part and what he had done for this family. And so Abigail spoke affirmation to him. She attacked his needs. If wives just get that part, if you just learn the need of your husband and attack that, you it, it, it would like to be so much easier for you. Listen, a lot of times wives don't necessarily like that a husband need his space. That a husband need some time to himself. That a husband need a season to go through his his rough journey. That a husband need to be in a separate room for um, for, for for a season. That a husband need you not to be all down his back. A wife don't like that. That's a need that he needs, and you don't like that. And so because you don't like that, you don't know how to serve him in that area. And in return, your household falls. Your household fails. All right. Abigail was only able to be this type of person. Like she was towards David because she was in tune with God's leading. If you are not in tune with God concerning your marital covenant, you're wasting your time. <laughs> you're wasting your time. I'm telling you. I don't know how many people I come in contact with who do not have the Lord in their life and do not have the Lord leading. 
you know um they're not they're not in tune with him on a regular you're not going to do well in that marriage covenant all right listen abigail had 99 reasons she had 99 reasons why she could have sat in bitterness self-pity spitefulness selfishness she could have been all these things she could have been unbothered unmotivated and missed the opportunity that god presented to her but instead but instead she rose up like a warrior and this is why she's my favorite y'all she rose up like a warrior and that's what you have to do too you have to rise up like a warrior in your good season, in your bad season, in your in-between season, in your own I ain't really sure season. You have to rise up like a warrior. I will, I will encourage wives to look up what a warrior a warrior is. And I have, I be trying to have like little books and stuff to show y'all some examples, but I'm behind. <laughs> but listen, you have to rise up like a warrior, wives. You have to rise up like a warrior concerning your household. If your husband is not home at the time, you rise up like a warrior. If your husband is there but he ain't talking to you, you rise up like a warrior. If your husband doing all that yang, yang, yang in your ear, whatever, you rise up like a warrior. You let him know, listen, okay? Now, I don't appreciate you talking to me this way. I'm going to give you your space that you need. But if you don't know how to speak to me in this type of manner, then we don't speak. All right, I'm gonna give you your time because it's like you might be going through something because sometimes you have to speak back to that spirit. You have to let that spirit know that I recognize that this is not my husband, that this is a spirit that is using my husband to be this way. And so therefore, I'm gonna call you out. Sometimes you have to be very direct with that spirit that's inside your husband, not disrespectful, all right? Not, it's a difference. It's a difference between being disrespectful and calling that spirit out and making your stand and setting your healthy boundary. I do not like when you speak to me this way. So if you do not know how to speak to me, we don't speak. All right? We don't we don't we don't speak. And that's just and that's just how it goes. You let that spirit know that I am not naive to what you're doing. And then after you've called that spirit out, you go in your closet, you go and you start praying, and you go and ask God to release your husband from this spirit. Lord, whatever that spirit. And this is why it's so important. Let me get this. This is why it's so important for you to know, and one of the things I do teach wise, and for you to know the type of spirit that you're dealing with, what kind of spirit that you're dealing with. If you're dealing with a a, per, a perverse spirit, you need to know what spirit it is. You can call that spirit out. If you're dealing with a um, pornography spirit, if you're dealing with you know a lust a lust spirit, you need to know what spirit it is. You can call that spirit out, so you can know exactly what to pray for. Old Islamo Jesus. So you can know exactly what to pray for when it comes down to your marriage. If you're dealing with um, a drug and alcohol that is a bondage spirit, you'll know how to call that spirit out. You evil, wicked, bondage spirit. I call you out in the mighty name of Jesus. You would not have my husband. You would not win. You would not win this battle. The Bible tells me you go into it. You have to know how to call that spirit out, how to pray it out, and how to stand on the God word. And when you don't see nothing happen, and when everything seems still, after you have went into warfare like that, and you went in and, and, and nothing still has happened, nothing still has changed, you know that you have already prayed your prayer and God has heard you. That Bible, it tells us that in the book of John. Since we know that he has heard our prayers, we know that he's going to answer us. We know that he's going to come through for us because he has heard our prayers. You need to know why, what spirit your husband is operating in so you can know how to pray for him. All right? And so... I would encourage you to look up that warrior, that warrior, um, that warrior word. Oh, this this thing here. Mm -mm. Are they cutting my yard? No. That's the people next door. They're making me upset now with this llama. I'm almost finished. All right. So over the next few weeks, we will explore Abigail's, Abigail's story more in detail. We will explore her character, we will explore her strategies, and we will explore her action plan. Abigail had a heart of God, and wives, you too need to develop a heart like God, all right? After reading and studying the story of Abigail, we will learn what characteristic traits that Abigail and God has in, cap has in common. Some of those things are examples like being approachable, being attentive, being active. Um, she displayed the, the good shepherd role. Um, she's an initiator, peacemaker, truth. She spoke truth. Um, she was worthy of praise and worship, how she bowed down before um, the king David, a giver, forgiving, 
I'm a promise keeper, hope, protector. She um, um, showed characteristics of sovereignty. Um, she accomplished her purpose. She was a giver of life because you have to be a giver of life in a marriage when you're dealing with an unhealthy spouse. You have to be that person that I'm going to lay my life down. The Bible talks about how um, um, that friend who lays his life down for another person. You're not doing that for no anybody. You're just not going to lay your life down for no anybody. But for your spouse, this is something that a wife uh, will learn how to do. All of these are attributes of God. And you will begin to see more traits as we study. And you can add to this list as well. So... As we come to the end, like I said, I wanted to just introduce to you what we're going to be studying, what we're going to be looking forward to in the weeks to come. Um, I want to give you a homework assignment. Yes, Coach T, give homework, honey. I give homework. And part of that homework assignment is um, for the next week, I want you to read 1 Samuel chapter 25, verses 1 to 13. All right, read 1 Samuel 25, verses 1 to 13. Familiarize yourself with um, that portion of Abigail's story. All right, the Bible tells us to study to show ourselves approved, you know, 2 Timothy 2 and 15. So familiarize yourself with that story. After reading that portion, journey down your thoughts and write down any questions you may have for next week, Bible study. I want you guys to kind of engage. I want you guys to ask questions or whatever. And, um kind of get what you need to get out of this in this season utilize this opportunity um as a way to prepare for your next season utilize this opportunity to prepare for your next season i absolutely love doing something like this i used to have a small group that i would meet with the young ladies on um i use the week on i think we met on wednesdays and you know just having that opportunity to meet with ladies and you know engaging in that um it was great it was wonderful um, because of my schedule now, I can't do it as much. So I'm looking forward to these next few weeks just to be able to teach and share with you um, about God's word. Okay. As always, I thank you guys for your support. I want to encourage my wives to sign up for her buoyancy boost. I know I could not leave this live without sharing this with you. All right. Her buoyancy boost is a wife's investment. Okay. It's in a wife. It's a investment for her, for the wife not for your marriage it's an investment for her the wife all right come learn how to nurture your soul we do that by the word of god i help and teach wives how to nurture their soul through the word of god prioritize self-care self-care is not just about going to your favorite restaurant eating your favorite food um you know benching on the on the on the sofa i'm um, in my in my um workbook i share with wives you know um, some of the things that Coach T went to, like I said, I've always prioritized self-care, but I never really focused on the physical part of self-care until I had a scare in my own life um, um, with some things. And so because of that, it's not, it's not just prioritizing yourself. And not only that, that, that physical situation, you know, it was, it was my, it was my blood pressure. And so I remember, I'm going to just give you this, this, this short transparent moment. I remember... Um, after me and my husband had separated, right? And I think it was like five months in, I had went home for Mother's Day to go visit my, my family. I went home to go visit my family. And so when I did so, we was in the grocery store, Winn-Dixie. We don't have Winn-Dixie's up here in Georgia. But we was in the grocery store. And I remember taking my blood pressure in Winn-Dixie. And it's just something because, you know, my, my, I said my father, he passed away um, from a stroke. You know, he had high blood pressure. So, it, you know, I knew it ran in my family or whatever. And so um, I took my blood pressure and it was normal. Like my blood pressure had always been normal. Like I kind of like was like, oh, go me. You know, I was like proud of my blood pressure. And so I went back home like normal. Didn't think nothing of it. Of it. And I think, you know, a few months or whatever had passed. I was working at, at, a, at, a, at this job and I was like, like kind of like months had passed since it was, it was Mother's Day, which is in May. And I want to say it was like, October when I started having these symptoms and I was like kind of like leaning like goodness why well, I feel like I'm about to fall all the time and then and the reason why that part stood out to me was because when my father was here in our home before he had his while he was going through his stroke um he was doing the same thing he kept on saying oh he wasn't saying a word he was saying my equal liberty was off 
but he was you know he kept on saying he was did he, he couldn't stand up straight and so when i was at this job i would be like going to say this and i was like kind of like leading to the side. i'm like oh what's going on like you know i couldn't and so i kind of at first kind of like didn't pay attention to it like we normally do people and um i didn't pay attention so i didn't focus on it or whatever as much and then the next thing i know I couldn't like I couldn't move. I like I was like stiff. I was like no, something is not right. Something is wrong. And so I told him I had to go lay down. Like I had to go lay down. And man, them people took my blood pressure. Jesus, the enemy was trying to take me out, y'all. I was like, what in the world? And during this time, I did not have medical insurance. I did not have medical insurance. So I I don't play. <laughs> Listen, I do not play when I talk about this. Prioritizing self care. It's not just the um. Uh, you know to buy yourself stuff and you know doing stuff for yourself but no you'll got to take care of yourself physically too because you don't know why the the toll uh, the stress that can take over you while you're dealing with an unhealthy spouse like I said my husband this was in the first year of my husband um and me being separated my blood pressure was like 200 over two something I'm like what in the world I just checked my blood pressure and it was fine isn't it but over those months I had to accumulate something and my blood pressure was high and so after that it's like I start to realize that it's not it's not it's not just it's not enough to you know go to your fancy restaurant it's not enough to just go get your hair did you know put on some nice clothes that's not enough you also need to take care of yourself physically and so um uh, people tell me all the time why you take so many naps because i'm resting i need to rest my body okay my old lady kick in and i have to rest and so i listen to my body and so that's one of the things i also talk about you know to my wife because you are in so much warfare because that's what it is you are in warfare um in that unhealthy marriage you have to you have to be intentional about prioritizing self-care and that is a question i drill my wife's wit on a regular what was the last what what did you do for yourself today when was the last time you, you looked into you when was the last time you checked into yourself i ain't talking about just going to get a slurpee or some ice cream i'm talking about you actually sat down you be still you turn the tv off you close the door you lay down you close your eyes you rest it prioritize self okay you have to prioritize self care so that is what my heart bones teach nurturing your soul through the word of god prioritizing self-care and then i teach you a formula i teach you a formula on how to love your unhealthy husband by remaining healthy yourself and that just goes back to uh teaching you the the the, the spirit man behind um your your husband that that mask that's behind um your husband and just giving you some strategies on how to you know maintain um healthy living and, and setting some healthy boundaries for yourself all right and so i always encourage my wife to sign up sign up for your her bonity boost you can go to my web page www.marriagechroniclesbytanika.com to sign up listen i am super excited what guys are going to do in this lent season if you did not catch us from the beginning you can always go back and catch the replay i look forward to this season i talk to you soon blessings